Delaware in the driver's seat as they take on Drexel here at home on Senior Day, live on Hens All Access. I'm Kyle Coulter. Thank you for spending part of your Saturday with us. With a win today, they will lock up a spot in the CAA tournament. Delaware looking to clean in their all-whites, and Drexel in their road blues, yellow shorts, gray domes. Easel's wide open, there's a look at the crease, major shot, and a goal! He now has 12 in the last five games, and he gets the scoring going here for the Hens. Here's Messina, splits inside, and he had his man, now he gets top side, goes back right, looking to take a shot, low angle, and it's in! My goodness, Connor Fasina. There's De Simone looking inside. There's a shot, beauty for Chris Culinary from his knees with his back to the cage. Cleans off his jersey. Cunningham has a left a screen to his left, decides not to use it, tries to get top side. Now look at the crease, shot, and that one is in. Drexel's on the board. He goes to the middle. Cunningham is in, gets hit hard. There's a goal and one. Varian dodges to his right. Rolls inside, has his hands free, shot! Saved by Parker Farragut, three seconds left. Tim Lyons rifles a shot, and that one is stopped by Granito. But he's able to pick up the ground ball and works it to X. And Robignoli was wide open, goes to DeSimone, avoids one defender, shot and a goal! My goodness! Dean DeSimone! Electrifies this Delaware crowd, which has wanted Delaware something goal, to cheer 13, about. Dean DeSimone. For the last half hour, and finally, Number 13 delivers. The sophomore from West Deptford, New Jersey, avoids one check, ew, and then fakes low, shoots high, and we are tied up at four. Goes across, Reynaldi, looks inside, a shot is saved by Farragut, coming across the crease to make it. 15 seconds, it's a break going the other way. Five on four for Delaware, O'Connor. Goes to the crease, Culinary gets yard sailed. At the 15 yard line, five seconds left. Drexel rifles it downfield. Schaefer with the shot right at Parker Farragut's stick. We are going into overtime. My goodness. Here's Reynaldi. Gets it to Kay with a shot and the goal, and that's it. Michael Kay and the Drexel Dragons. Drexel goal, number 40. Michael come into Kay. the University of Delaware and take down the Hens by a score of six to five in overtime. And boy, what a lacrosse game you just saw. Thank you very much for your attendance this afternoon. Drexel improves the five and eight on the year, one and three in conference Delaware play, Friday, and their CAA tournament hopes PM. are still alive. The the Delaware season. drops to five and nine on the year, Visit two and two in conference play, and that puts a big circle around the Fairfield game next Friday night here at seven o'clock. Well, good day to you baseball fans, and what a beautiful Day at is here in Newark, Delaware. Welcome into Hens All Access's coverage of University of Delaware baseball. The Hens 21 and 11 on the year, four and five in the CAA. The Huskies 16 and 14, four and four in conference play. Arenaccio with the pitch. That one swung on and missed. High heat, blew it right by him. K from Arenaccio, and that will do it for the top of the second from the full windup. The junior righty deals. That one crosses the plate, called strike three. Mayer is retired on strikes. That pitch very similar to the one that they just argued about the pitch prior, and that will strand Trimble at third. There's the pitch, Glover slaps it through the right side. That's gonna be an RBI single for the reigning co-CAA player of the week. That brings in Tierno, and it is one nothing Delaware here in the bottom of the third. Marinaccio trying to trying to switch up his tempo a little bit, you see, and he's, he stalled there a little bit longer in the down position before he went over to first. Here's the pitch. That one swung on. Could be two. Ake to second. Tierno to first. Double play. Savali working quickly. That one is slapped down the right field line. It is going to drop for a fair ball. Ake rounding first. Going to second. He will be in with a sliding double. Goes a little bit over the back, but is able to get back. Fielding, fielding percentage has been an issue for the Hens who sit fifth in the CAA in that category. Two errors in this inning have led to those runs. That one low, Mayer's gonna fire over to third. Nardo, the pass goes away into left field and that'll allow, that'll allow Burt to come home to score. Savali, Patton crushes that one over the head of McConnell. That one is going back, back, back off the wall. And Patton rounds second, he is in there with a double. 
Here's a 2-1, runner goes. It was a hit and run down the third baseline. It's past Nardo. Going around to third is Walsh. Glover hits the second baseman, Tierno. Millie deals. That one swung on into right field. That one drops in front of Baker. Baker comes up throwing home. One run will score. It is now four to one. That one is lofted into center field. Mulholland tracking back. That will score a run. The catch is made. Mulholland going to third all the way. What a throw. And he's safe. Beats the throw. There's the next pitch. That one's grounded to the left side. Coming in is Burt. Burt fires across the diamond. And that will do it. The Northeastern Huskies take game one of this three-game series, 6-1. to one. They'll be back in action tomorrow against the Huskies at 1 p.m. and then again on Sunday at 1 o'clock as well. They'll look to try to win two back and get this series back in their control. Welcome into Hens All Access's coverage of University of Delaware men's soccer. It's Davey Arty chips it along. That's a beautiful ball. Delgado is there. Delgado finishes, and it's 1-0. The captain with his seventh goal of the year with the assist from Davey Arty, and it is scoreless no more. The white team, the home team, jumps up. one nothing thanks to the right foot of number nine. It's one played ahead, DiRienzo there with some room. Adel Steinson coming over, he's just gonna try to trip the keeper, and a stunner! <laughs> Nick DiRienzo! With a beautiful goal from just outside the box. And there's a giveaway, Delgado. Delgado to his right. Beats the keeper, shot, and a goal, it's 4-0. Delgado with his second. Another costly turnover there by the Dukes. It was a great game for Delaware, a great broadcaster for the Hens All Access team. Thank you so much for joining us. The rain couldn't stop us. Until next time, have a great night, everybody. There's Devlin, but it's taken away. Here's Himes. Into the circle, looking to cross it. She does, there's the shot, and a goal! Just over three minutes in. Delaware was victimized by that against Liberty, a quick goal. Here's the insert, it's stopped. It's gonna be Nock with the shot. That was deflected in and we're tied up. Just like that, under a minute later. And the penalty corner, the great work by Esme Pete. And it's finished, I believe Heisman had the goal. Delaware's penalty corner defense uh, hasn't been stellar this year. They've given up 55 corners, 11 goals off those. Here's the insert, the stop, it'll be Himes with the shot, that one's deflected down, and Altman's got her pad to it, they're gonna take another shot, and that one's stopped by Michelson, stopped by Bink. It'll be Pete with the shot, this time it's a goal! Wow. Esme Pete, off the corner. Puts it in and Delaware takes a two to one lead. Himes, here's the stop, Batiste dribbles around, still with on her stick, takes the shot, it's deflected it in! Wow. 20 matchup is going to come down in overtime to a penalty shot. Batiste versus Altmans. Here we go. Batiste takes a shot and it's in and it's over. It was a uh, it was a hard fought battle from beginning to end. Virginia hopped out early. Delaware with a two to one lead in regulation and then it was tied right before we went into overtime. And then you just saw what happened on the penalty stroke. Tara Batiste winning it for the visiting team. That'll do it for us here on Hens All Access. You just watched a dandy of a field hockey game. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Go enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Back at the Trip Athletic Center, Kyle Coulter with you. Thank you for taking time out of your Thursday night to watch this thriller between the St. Joe's Blue Jays and your UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. The first set, the teams were tied at seven, and the Corsairs just took off like a rocket. Opened up a seven-point lead and never looked back. In the second set, the Jays did the same, opened up a large lead and kept it the entire set. And then you just saw what happened in set number three. The Corsairs jumped out to a seven-point lead, eight to one, and they took set number three handily. So we'll see what set number four has in store for us. And that one drops, a beautiful serve there from Jasmine Buckley. 20 to 12, Sakura pops that one over. Buckley handles Miller. Now for Grimaldi with a big swing, so much open court, and the senior had no trouble finding it. Sangara, Spinazzola, Silverman charging towards the net, just has to tip that one over. Grimaldi, that one's bumped over. Spinazzola handles, Sakura. Now Sangara charging towards the net from the back end, and a little miscommunication there. It looked like between Buckley and Grimaldi, not sure if they, they 
thought the other was going to get it or they thought that it was going to go long. But Sangara has been deadly accurate tonight in her attacks. 17 kills, only four errors. She's got a, a career high in digs tonight with 19, and she's too shy of her career high in kills. The sophomore gets it over. Miller for Buckley. Sinter keeps it alive, and that one will get over. Good dig there by Singara. Lemick blocked back, and that'll do it. Singara and West finish it in fantastic style. Point Corsairs, set Corsairs, match UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. They beat the St. Joe's Blue Jays 3-1, to one, and they improved to 9-15 and 15 overall, and the Blue Jays dropped to 10-13. and 13. Well, it's been an impressive week and a half for the Corsairs. They are 3-0 in their last three matches. They take this momentum to Western Connecticut, looking to get their first conference win on Saturday. And then they're back home against Rhode Island College. That'll be a big conference game next Tuesday. That'll be right here on CorsairAthletics.com. So make sure you tune in for that one. That'll do it for us here from CorsairAthletics.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Kyle Coulter. Have a great night, everybody. Jakeem Wilson has it up top, just to the left of the GBC logo. 10 seconds now, nine. And now Shaquem Wilson will attack. Goes to his left, tries to get inside, goes right at Laboon, off the glass. Torres with the offensive rebound, up and in. And that's how the first half will end. Algeron Torrance, the senior, gets the offensive rebound and puts it in. Senior started and ended the scoring there in the first half here on Senior Day. And the Lightning with a very impressive first half take a seven point lead into the locker room. Andrew Wick and Kyle Coulter back with you here as Joseph West Jones Center about to kick off the second half of the War of Wilmington. He, Lightning have a seven point lead over the Wildcats. Courtesy of 14 second chance points and 10 offensive rebounds in the first half. Corey Tate thought about the three, now backs it out. 10 to shoot, he attacks. Step back, gains some separation from the foul line. The jumper is good. Put Sanders on skates and knock down the jumper from just outside the foul line. It's a four point game. Wildcats back in the high 3-2 zone. Shaquem Wilson dribbles up top, gets it to Tate. 16 to shoot, Shaquem Wilson has it again. A deep three, that one's good! He does it time and time again hitting clutch threes. And a huge one right there, lightning back up by six. And with 10 seconds left, Shaquem Wilson well, all, all, all he will have to do is get it into the front court. He does. Three, two, one. That's how this game will end. The Lightning get it done on senior day. They win 78 to 66, winning the War of Wilmington. Taking down the crosstown rivals, Corey Tate with 26 points on eight of 13 shooting. He was also seven of eight from the line. The Lightning improved to 9 and 18 overall and 7 and 11 in CACC. Wilmington Wildcats dropped to 9 and 18 and 4 and 14 in conference play. And looking at the University of Sciences Chestnut Hill game, it was 41 to 18 at half. It is now 46 to 40. So the University of Sciences giving Chess giving the Lightning some hope. There's still 9 minutes left in that game. Uh, you can find the live stats on caccathletics.com if you want to keep keep updated. But um, the Lightning got it done on their end, and now the, it's just up to the University of the Sciences to get it done against Chestnut Hill, and then the Lightning will have to beat Georgian Court uh, in the coming days, and then also have Philly U beat Chestnut Hill as well. So there is life still for Lightning basketball here as we come towards playoff time. Absolutely, and we'll look at the scoring for Wilmington. Leading the way, no surprise there, Tyre Ponzo Meek with 24. He also had five boards and five assists. And then you also had Adkins with 12 and Medlin with 11. And then for Goldie Beacom, we mentioned it, Corey Tate with 26. And then you had Shaquem Wilson with 15, Elijah Tillman with 14. He was one rebound shy of another double-double. And then six from Swint and Shamu, five from Lane, and then two apiece from Torrance Stain and Ridgeway Higgs. It was an impressive all-around performance. I'm glad we were here to call it, and I'm glad you were here to watch and listen. That'll do it for us here from the Joseph West Jones Center. Aaron Anderson was on the camera. Brad Wolak was producing. Andrew Wickman was to my right. And I'm Kyle Coulter. Until next time, have a great day, everybody. 
As the Brown Bears and the Harvard Crimson prepare to do battle, he's Kyle Coulter. I'm Mike Rubin, and it's great to have you on board with us for what is a beautiful day and the Bears trying to snap out of a funk that has seen them lose four of their last five games, including uh, last week. A tough loss, Kyle, considering the Bears were, uh, were in it and had an opportunity down the stretch against a very good Cornell team. Oh, Cornell, a fantastic team, a top-10 team in the country. They got down 3-0 early, but they battled back twice. It was a one-goal game in the second half, and then a four-goal run by the Big Red kind of pushed that one uh, out of reach for, for Brown. But you, you have to be be happy with that effort. They also saw the, the emergence or re-emergence of Jillian Lee, one of the top goal scorers from last year, came back, had two goals in that game, her first two of the season. She's starting today. Could she be the missing link in this Brown offense, which has struggled this season? With under 40 left on the play clock. The feed in front, Paletta the shot, the score! Moynard in for Paletta, two goals for the Bears. On two feeds, Kyle, and the Bears have a lead 2-1. to one. Ground balls win games, Mike. I will say it over and over again. This one started off, this ground ball right here. Great job by Paletta, and then she ends up reaping, uh, reaping the rewards of her hard work. Moynard in, curling up above goal line extended. Paletta sees her man's head is turned. Picks it up and dumps it in, what she's been doing all season. The leading goal scorer on this team, her 25th of the year. And, Mike, you mentioned it. Great sign, both of those goals coming from assists. Good evening. I'm Kyle Coulter with your look at this very busy day in the world of sports. Well, encouraging news for the Jets fans, as Geno Smith reportedly completed every pass while playing catch with his buddy at his apartment complex this morning. Smith had surgery on his jaw on Thursday after being punched by former teammate I.K. Enampali. According to Coach Bowles, Smith was not supposed to be throwing just yet, but the quarterback did make his return to the Jets training facility today for treatment. Well, it was pushing 90 degrees here on day two of Jets training camp, but the real hot topic was Pro Bowl defensive lineman Sheldon Richardson and the reports that came out yesterday that he was arrested back on July 14th. Richardson is already facing a four-game suspension, and this second incident has coaches and teammates concerned about his behavior. Although the Jets and Richardson have not been contacted by the NFL, a larger suspension could be looming. From Florham Park, I'm Kyle Coulter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Well, folks, it is that time of year again. Delaware Athletics is back, and with it, another year of live streams right here on Hens All Access. We kick off the 2015-2016 Delaware Athletics season with the women's soccer team right here at Stewart and Suzanne Grant Stadium coming up in just a few minutes. They are playing host to the Black Knights of Army. Both teams won their first games in convincing fashion, and they're both looking to improve on under 500 seasons from a year ago. Two very senior-lated teams who graduated only seven seniors between them last season. Should be a great matchup. Once again, this is the first stream of many that will be right here on Hens All Access. We're going to toss it to Brent. When we come back, we'll have starting lineups and the opening kick. Don't go anywhere. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tubby Raymond Field, the University of Delaware, for CAA.TV's coverage of the 2015 CAA Women's Lacrosse Tournament alongside Sheehan Birch. I am Kyle Coulter. We will have the call for you today on CAA.TV. Thank you so much for joining us. We have two outstanding games on deck for you. The one we're going to be previewing, which is going to start in just a few minutes, the one-form matchup between the three-time defending CAA champs, Towson Tigers, and the one seed, Hofstra Pride. Oh, Hofstra, perfect in the CAA, looking to continue their streak. You mentioned April. She's got 31 cause turnovers as well as being an offensive threat, so a well-rounded player. Two well-rounded teams going at it in just a few minutes. We're going to toss it to break. We'll be right back with the opening draw here on CAA.TV. All right, thanks, guys. I'm down here with Houston head coach Todd Winning. As he says hello to UCF head coach Greg Lovelady, maybe a, a little foreshadowing there. But, coach, you seem to love the Sunshine State. You've now won yeah. 12 of 15 games here at Clearwater in the American Tournament. Uh, wh what's allowed you to be so successful down here? Well, I didn't know that. I hope you didn't jinx us, but uh, I don't know. I mean, the kids just seem to play well here. You know, it's, it's postseason time. You know, you want to get your program to the point to where when it's postseason time, they kind of step it up and play a little better. But uh, we have played good this week, really good today. Um, you know, their guy to the left, he was really good. He was tough on us. I thought we just did a great job of grinding out at bats, you know, and taking advantage of opportunities when we had them. Let's talk about the American Conference Pitcher of the Year, Trey Cumbie. Just threw an absolute gem today when he needed to. Uh, how, just, just talk about his performance today. Well, he's so competitive. You know, he's a real quiet kid. He's real, you know, quietly competitive. I mean, he's a bulldog on the inside. And, you know, when he gets those pitches going, all three of them for strikes, he's pretty tough. And uh, he did a good job of just bouncing, you know, keeping the ball in and out of the zone and not, not throwing, ever really throwing it down the middle. 
You've now reached your fourth straight American Conference Tournament Championship. You've lost the last two. What do, what is the, what do the Houston Cougars need to do to make it two conference championships in the last four years? We just got to play good. You know, I don't think you can make any big deal out of it. You just got to go out and play the same game we've been playing all year, and, and they're pretty good about that. So hopefully get some rest tonight and just, and just go out and play as hard as you can tomorrow. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. I'm now joined by UConn freshman Anthony Prado, and it's not often a two-for-five day actually lowers your average in the tournament. You came in batting 700. You were able to keep the bat hot today. What's been working for you so well this tournament? Uh, I think it's all just about my approach. I, I came in tournament struggling a lot, and I just got to try to simplify it and go to right center, get the off-speed hitter to right center, and I, it's been working. You've had upperclassmen that have been in this situation before. This is your first year going through it, going back to another semifinal. How have they helped you, and what's your mindset heading into this uh, this final weekend? Uh, they've been huge for me. Willie, Aaron, Frenchie, Nesda, all the, all the upperclassmen. Just believe it, believe it. We're gonna make. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna make it. Believe it. And I mean, just go out there and win one tomorrow, and then win the other one. That's all you can do. You gotta win the first one. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Rest up, and we'll we'll see you out here tomorrow. Thank you. All right.